everybody. Once again, it's Tech Lab Tuesday time. Yeah, we've been on vacation here through the summer. Took a little bit of time off to get out there and do some uh, summertime activities. But uh, we know that you guys have been watching the reruns, uh, the summer reruns, as they've been called for years and years. And uh, I want to thank you all uh, for one, tuning in, and two, for providing us with some good suggestions. I've gotten emails, got a couple of Facebook uh, uh, recommendations as well. Uh, they're coming directly to me, Dave Monahan, and they're very good suggestions. Uh, most of you guys want to have a, a lot more detail, a lot more technical into these videos, and we're going to wick it up for you this fall as we uh, start uh, releasing the new Tech Lab Tuesday videos. But a couple of things have changed, and uh, one thing for sure is I have an associate here for the fall uh, season of Tech Lab Tuesday, and uh, his name is Richard Orlikowski. Richard is our, uh, say hi to everybody, Richard. Hi, everybody. Richard is our, our new product manager. Now, a lot of you have met Richard at the trade shows, PRI specifically, uh, maybe some of the AERA technical conferences. Richard is not new to this company. He's been with us for over 20 years. He's worn a lot of hats. He's worked in just about every department uh, within this company, and proud to have him as part of my uh, Tech Lab Tuesday team up here today. Uh, one thing that I wanted to start off Tech Lab Tuesday with um, on this first episode is kind of recap this, uh, this spring bench, the CF500. Some of the uh, manufacturing uh, characteristics have changed and this is all aluminum casting just poured into a sand type of mold. But what they've done on this uh, uh, particular head here is now we've got strap steel. It's going to give us a lot more rigidity uh, in our vertical pressure up and down and uh, I think it's a good improvement. They've gone to aluminum uh, uh, block material here at the, t at the bottom, what holds the uh, press foot that pushes the valve against the valve seat. The enclosure for the rack and pinion up here is also made out of the same aluminum block material. Everything else is, is, is basically the same, but it is a new look, and uh, a lot of you people have ordered this tool in the past, and I wanted to kind of go through it. So. Putting it up here first, I uh, thought I'd go ahead and give you another run through on just how this machine works. So hang on, we're going to get to that right now. So once again, I said this is our CF500 valve spring compressing bench. This is a manual unit. We use it to uh, compress uh, uh, the valves uh, to get the uh, keepers out on these multi-valve overhead cam cylinder heads. I'm going to use this particular cylinder head here because it's got not two or three or four valves, but it's got five valves, three intakes and two exhausts. I believe this is a, an Audi uh, application, but uh, Honda has that. I think BMW has that. And uh, multi-valves, three for sure, mostly four, and a few of them on the, on the five side of the equation. Good money in these cylinder heads uh, to bring them in there. Uh, but before you can do your magic, which is, you know, machining, and uh, putting them back into to like new condition, you got to take them apart. You got to clean them. You got to inspect them. And there's a variety of different ways to take cylinder heads apart. My gosh, yeah, I've been, I, I, you know, I've been in this business, man and boy, 47 years. And with a socket and a hammer, I can take most cylinder heads apart. But uh, I've never been able to put a cylinder head back, back together with a socket and a hammer, and heck, I don't sell sockets or hammers anyway for that matter, but wait a minute, I do sell a hammer. This is our PK200, our piston knocker, when you're slugging pistons into engine blocks. This little offset uh, head design uh, goes a long, long way in facilitating the installation of those piston assemblies into those engine blocks. But now I'm getting off track. We don't sell sockets, we don't sell hammers. We offer you machine tools like this CF500. Now, this thing has a unique design. When we push down on the retainer, this part of the cylinder head, here where that spring is located to get to those keepers, we've got to have a way to hold that valve against the valve seat. And the only way to do that in this particular design is when we're pressing down, this is actually rising up. This Delron material here is pressing against that valve head, holding it against the valve seat, so this presser foot can actually push on the retainer, expose those uh, keepers, and we can snake them right out of that uh, cam bore, uh, cam uh, uh, lifter bore bucket bore that's down uh, underneath the cams to get that head uh, disassembled. We uh, offer a variety of different diameter of these uh, adapters. 
uh, 18, 23, 28 millimeter, and 35 millimeter. And the one you see right here is the 28 millimeter, and it's of course standard with the machine. A couple other things I want you to be aware of. The only thing that's holding the cylinder head on top of this uh, uh, platform here is gravity. But to keep it from sliding off and into our lap, we use these dowel pins. And on that dowel pin, we're gonna locate right in this area here where there's a couple of parallel planes from here to here. And these dowel pins are adjustable and immovable according to which application you have in there at that particular time. It's also adjustable from zero to 45 degrees right here. So you can see we can get those heads at a pretty good angle. We don't want them sliding off the floor. And that's what those dowel pins plus gravity is what holds that against this head mounting platform. Now to protect this cylinder head deck that you've just machined, because you've done all the work on it, you got all new valves, you cut the seats or ground the seats, new guides, you've surfaced it, you're ready to put this thing together. Now we don't want to be putting burrs and buggers on this uh, on this beautiful surface that you guys just put on it. So here's a Delron material, a protector that's replaceable, and that's what we set the cylinder head on. This unit also traverses left to right down the full travel, as you can see here. Uh, these aluminum bars also move back and forth in and out. A feature here is the fact that I have a about a three inch travel out and then three inch travel back in again also when this lever is unlocked i've got plus 25 degrees this way plus 25 degrees that way for the canted valve applications there's a lot of cool features on this particular machine and uh, uh you might know well dave what's this collar for it's a good question i'll tell you what this collar is for it can be used in two places i can use that as a depth collar if i can't compress any further than that or I can locate it down here or buy an optional collar and put one at the top and one at the bottom. That way when I've got it compressed, I can let go with both hands and it won't retract out of the way. That leaves both hands freed up to deal with the uh, uh, keepers and retainers and springs and valve stem seals that I need to put on this solar head as I'm assembling it or putting it back together. So this uh, slide hammer up on top you might be saying, well, what the heck they put a slide hammer on a head bench for? Well, I'll tell you. You can build up some crud, you can get some varnish, and uh, that old oil and that heat that this engine's been running at kind of forms a little glue in this area. So even though we can compress that retainer and expose those keepers, they don't always want to come out. A little action from our slide hammer jostles it around a little bit, loosens up that uh, gum, varnish, sticky goo that I was just talking about, and it allows us to get in there and remove those keepers. But listen to me talk about it is one thing. Showing you how it works is another thing, and that's what I want to do here right now. Now, before I can take this head apart, I've got to make sure I've got the right adapter. In this particular case, for the intakes on this application, I need to go to the 18 millimeter adapter. That's this one right here. You can see it fits right in. It's a pretty quick change. Loosen my collar. There's an Allen head set screw going in here horizontally. I think it's a three millimeter uh, metric. And we open that up, pull that out. And the other one just shoves right in there. Just like. So you can see old Fumble Fingers Dave up here again. Uh, drop in tools because a little rusty after the summer break, but that's what that's all about. And I've got my dowel pin set. I've kind of got a, a pre-set up on this cylinder head, even though I've moved things around here, showing you some of the added features that we've incorporated into this. But let me go ahead and get this up. I've already got it located to go right there. I need to tilt it ever so slightly to line up. So I've got a flat plane here, lock this clamp, Lock that clamp, move my head over a little bit, just do a quick check to make sure that I've got the proper setup, everything's aligned. Get my clamp there, make sure everything's going to work. I'm doing everything right. Lock that clamp, lock that clamp, and now lock that clamp. So again, those dowel pins are keeping it from sliding off the front into my lap. Now this is where I really want you to look, as I was telling you about this foot. I don't know if you can see this or not in the camera, but here's that Delron foot. It's gonna press itself up against the valve head, 
hold the valve head up against the valve seat and then allow us to specifically just compress the retainer, push on the retainer, compress the spring and expose those keepers. That's where this little guy comes into play. This is our VKM17, our straw magnet. It's got an earth magnet there, it's got an earth magnet there. And once I got that spring compressed, I can reach in there, grab a keeper. And grab the other keeper right there. Now these are little bitty keepers, so keep track of them because if you drop them on the floor, well, you're gonna be looking at them for a while. You might say, well, wow, Dave, that's pretty easy for taking it apart. But again, you could do that with a socket and a hammer. How are you going to get it back together? That's where our VKM 5, 6, 7, and 8 come in. What this has is a special keeper tool. It's designed 6 millimeter for this particular application. It's got a surgical elastic band around this tweezer part, and that's what holds the keeper itself. This is a retracting plunger that allows the valve stem to go uh, expose itself so the keeper grooves are then available for those keepers just to snap right in. Now what I've learned is fat side up, skinny side down, and you can shove keepers in a retainer if you try hard enough and get them in there backwards, but if you get them in there backwards and that retainer comes off and that valve drops, you're gonna have a bad day. So let's make sure we orientate our keepers correctly in our BKI tool for the assembly process. So again, we're putting it back together. You've done your valve job. You've cut the seats, you surfaced it. It's all ready to go. We compress that rascal, stick that right in there on the top. You hear it click, retract that. And once again, I'm back to a fully assembled cylinder. So BKI6, BKM17, CF500, various diameter adapters for the different diameter uh, lifter bucket bores that we're going into. And uh, uh, if you're doing a lot of these multi-valve overhead cam cylinder heads, this is the, is the uh, tool you need in your shop. Any questions, give us a call 1-800-533-8010 or catch us on the web at goodson.com. We're back. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.